Hey everybody, I've got an incredible video for you today because that is a 1938 Mercedes-Benz 540K Streamliner. And this is one of the most incredible cars I've ever seen from a period in history, which is, you know, not one of the most prideful in Germany, let's be honest. But this thing is insanely incredible. It's got some of the coolest gadgets and gizmos I've ever seen, and we're going to take an in-depth look at it. The Mercedes 540K was an extremely large, extremely expensive luxury vehicle sold in the 1930s. Here in Germany, it was sold to very wealthy folks and, well, rather unsavory people in political parties. But this is the 540K Streamliner. This is a one-of-one one aerodynamically designed vehicle intended for high-speed running over a long period of time. And it was initially designed for a cross-country rally road race which was cancelled I, I assume due to events going on in the 1930s but it ended up at the Dunlop Tire Corporation and Dunlop had great interest in this vehicle because of the newly established Autobahn right so one of the big programs throughout Germany in the 1930s was connecting cities via a centralized road network uh, where vehicles could travel at very high speeds and if you go back to the 1930s, most vehicles were traveling at low speeds. They were very unaerodynamic. But Mercedes put this program together to experiment with how aerodynamics could affect the vehicle over extended periods of time. So they got rid of the rather unaerodynamic bodywork of the 540K and gave it this beautiful streamlined masterpiece, which is one of the most beautiful and quite honestly imposing designs I think I have ever seen. This right here is some super villain super villain design language if I've ever seen one. So Dunlop used this vehicle for high-speed tire testing. Now it was capable of cruising speeds of between like 165 kilometers an hour um, and 175 kilometers an hour. So we're talking over 100 miles an hour back in the late 1930s for sustained time. No, that wasn't just one and done. That was designed to be sustained over a long period of time. And then the max speed, VMAX, was right around 185 kilometers an hour. So we're talking about 120K. So Dunlop found this to be a very interesting vehicle when it came to developing tires. And we actually can see that they have uh, faithfully restored this vehicle with the Dunlop Ford tire. So they owned this car for a number of years. It ended up back in Mercedes' hands in, I think, 1941, which was a pretty pivotal time. And world history and uh, it remained in Mercedes collection for many 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 years mostly disassembled however and it was lying in parts in the corner of a uh, of a building until roughly 10 years ago when Mercedes took it upon themselves to faithfully and accurately restore this vehicle to 1930s standards um, they had to basically remanufacture the entire body it's made entirely out of aluminum but they kept every record of this car when it was being developed so they knew exactly what they were doing and how to do this so, so this is going to be a bucket list moment for sure unbelievably excited for this oh wow look at that dashboard incredible so a completely solid wood dashboard. And then there you've got the gauges. So you've got RPM, you've got fuel, uh, charge, and then kilometers an hour. And we were just talking that back in the day, this would do up to about 185, is that right? 185 kilometers an hour. This is the most incredible view out of the front. The windshield is only maybe 12 inches tall and there's almost no headroom for a car that's what 20 feet long that is just amazing so here we go down the front the front straight here this is a supercharged 5.4 liter inline eight and there you can see uh <laughs> the newer car is getting out of the way pretty quickly as it should be what a thing of beauty to listen to this is the first inline eight car I've ever driven. I've never driven a, uh, been in a car with an inline eight, and it doesn't sound like a V8. It's got a very distinctive sound. It's kind of got the smoothness of a straight six, but it's got this just sinister grumble down the front of it. Honestly, for a car dating back to 1938, which is well over 70 years old at this point, it feels remarkably intact. Well over 80 years old. Oh. <laughs> that is the most incredible sound I think I've ever heard. Let's talk about it from a design standpoint. Obviously, it is an enormous machine. Um, 
if you park this next to an S-Class of today, uh, you're going to probably dwarf it. And it's got a straight eight engine, 5.4 liter inline eight with a supercharger that makes right around 185 horsepower. But that is where a lot of this incredible poor portion comes from. Starts here, ends right about here. It's about four feet long, and that's why you have that huge bonnet. They cut these holes in the hood. I read Dunlop to aid in cooling because they were using this genuinely for high-speed testing. And uh, up front, it's got these flush-mounted headlights, which were pretty remarkable for back in the day. It's got three headlights. Uh, one kind of interesting fact is that you can see the grill actually lies way beyond the radiator, and it's the standard 540K grill, which kind of makes a point there. And then underneath here is where you're gonna find the radiator. It's got a painted on Mercedes emblem versus a star, all in the name of aerodynamics. As we come along the side, they flush mounted the door handle, which was very revolutionary, once again, to keep it as aero as possible. They didn't want any drag on the vehicle. And then it's got suicide doors to the interior. If we come along to the side, here you'll find your trafficators. Those are your old style turn signals, semaphores essentially, um, some venting there, and then a perfectly streamlined tail, which was really remarkable back in the day, single exhaust port, and then underneath glass is your number plate and that would illuminate. So if we take a look at the interior, first of all, this door, this is the best feeling door I've ever experienced. Never before has there been a door that just encompasses so much metal. Now this is a four seater, but barely. As enormous as the car is, the rear seats are absolutely tiny, and we've got this huge gap between the actual uh, side skirt of the vehicle and the driver's seat. But check out this dashboard. So a full one-piece wooden dashboard, large imposing steering wheel, an enormous steering wheel, no power steering, of course. We've got the three pedals with the Mercedes stars. They come straight out of the floor. And then over here is the actual gear stick some seat adjustments down there and then of course you got your dials so you got your temperature gauge there you got your tachometer um, benzene gas oil oil pressure we got a clock yeah it looks like a clock and then a speedometer there and then basically no headroom a tiny amount of headroom for the size of the vehicle the doors beautifully crafted door pulls here our window liners lined in wood the uh, the kick plate around the door or the arm plate around the door lined in wood every single thing you touch in this vehicle uh, feels more solid than the interior of just about any new vehicle. Four, a three-speed transmission with an overdrive. Uh, once again, very faithfully restored. And then there you've got your heater box, some mystery switches, which I have no idea what they do. Um, but an incredible restoration from the Mercedes team. Let's listen to that door thunk. I almost chopped off my finger. That was pretty stupid. <laughs> <laughs> but coming along the back, we got the trunk back there, little tail lights, um, enormous fuel filler once again blended into the side of the vehicle. So this is an, this is a, an important car in history, right? It is one of the early efforts at long distance high speed cruising with streamlining. Of course, it's got a pretty sinister pass. There's just no way around around that. But still, amazing to see in person, and one of the early uh, attempts at what would eventually become the incredible aerodynamic cars which we see today. And you can see that based on the RPM gauge, the red line is only about 4,000. Wow! Wow! So not only do you get that insane supercharger whine, but you can actually hear the air rushing into the intake. Which <laughs> That is unbelievable. So does the supercharger only come on when you push down hard on the throttle? Is yeah, it? With the gas pedal. Okay. You over take the gas pedal and then there's a clutch and then came the supercharger. Thank you for doing this. This was an incredible experience. No problem. <laughs> it's a once in a lifetime. Power steering or is it all manual steering? Uh, there is power steering. <laughs> Good thing I'm not driving. We'd never turn. <laughs> All right, so let's see what the, uh, the straight eight in the uh, Mercedes looks like. So there's a special little tool. Holy, that is a monster engine. Just incredible. So that's where a lot of the length of the vehicle comes from, right? Because um, in a V8, right, you're only dealing with the total length of four cylinders. 
plus two, but in the straight in the straight eight, you have to push the whole engine from the front to the back. But a surprisingly huge amount of space to work on it. And there you can see the radiator looks pretty similar to like a standard 540K, so it still has the iconic V and it's upright. It's just hidden behind the streamlined bodywork, which is amazing. Well, a huge thank you to Mercedes for allowing me to take a ride in the incredible 540K Streamliner. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. As always, this has been Tommy with TFL Classics. Check out TFL Classics for the latest and greatest. That guy's ripping it. <laughs> latest and greatest in classic. And then, of course, new reviews.